So what was it like to be a Grey Warden with all the others? I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. Hmm. Were there any dwarves amongst them? There was one when I first joined, a dwarf named Kerrick. He was one of the elders, and he, he left for Orzammar before the reports of the Blight began. It's too bad, really. Kerrick said that he never wanted to go back. He wanted to die fighting Darkspawn on the surface. There was huh. one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? Was Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. Huh. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got huh. drunk. Finally, really? they all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Huh. He drank a lot but all the time, but he never got drunk? That's how that's odd. <laughs> huh. <laughs> I bet I could have outdrank him. Oh, I honestly doubt it. He might have tried, but this fella had a supernatural constitution, I swear. <laughs> Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He huh. was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. <laughs> I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other, and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... Until... Hmm. I'm sorry, this must be hard for you. Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. Aww. There's no body, not even a token of his that I could... take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, I understand. there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. Poor Alistair. I'm wondering something. What? I'd like to what know your it? thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? Uh... Hmm. <laughs> Time for the juicy gossip, I take it. I've got this nefarious plan to go around to each of them and secretly tell them all the nasty things you said. That what? way they'll mutiny and I shall become the group leader. <laughs> oh, you nefarious schemer, you. Curse your inevitable betrayal. See, I can do this too, Alistair. I wouldn't choose Elias to lunch. <laughs> I love the dialogue choices you can choose. Here. Some of them are so funny. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't trust you to lead us to... L nah, that, that'd be kind of mean. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll play along. Hey, that's a pretty good policy. <laughs> Where exactly is lunch, anyway? <laughs> Seriously, though, I'm only curious. I've had enough time to form my own opinions, and I just want to see if yours are any different. Uh-huh. Hmm. Only if you tell me your opinion as well. Just try and stop me. Let's see, right. where should I begin? What about Sten? The hmm. way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. Huh. He's so quiet for someone so big. Hmm. Hmm. I respect him. He has, uh... He, he's a bit rough. And, uh... You know, doesn't... <laughs> yeah, the, the one-word answers. But, uh... I can, you know, even though he did what he did, he he admits that he did it without even realizing what he was doing, and then he caged himself and such, and he holds his people's customs very seriously. I respect him for that. The more I talk to him, the more reasonable he does seem. His philosophy is so strange, but it doesn't sound at all as vile as the Chantry describes it. Mm -hmm. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? Mm. It does bother me a little. 
Yet he seems otherwise honorable and even wise. I don't get it. Hmm. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? What about Liliana? Or do you really believe in her vision? Hmm. Uh, it could be true. Who's to say it isn't? Maybe you're right. It's not as if she could have known that we needed help so desperately after all. Huh. Yet, there she was. Uh -huh. I noticed and there that she is in the background. you and her have become <laughs> close. Am I right? The rest of us have talked about it. Really? Yes, we do have a connection. I thought so. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I hope so, I don't so know too. what to make of it. <laughs> If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so, so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. Hmm. It was her choice. Yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan, Ta you trust her. Here we go. Think about it. <laughs> Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. Hmm. Hmm. You really don't like each other, do you? Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch. Whoa. No, I don't like her at all. <laughs> oh, man. Why, do you? Hmm. I like her just fine. Great. I am thrilled beyond words. No, really. <laughs> Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? I I don't think I've ever actually gotten to hear what he says about the other ones that we are gonna get uh, get la later on. Uh, I think I usually get this conversation very early on because I use the that gift. Something on your mind? Of course. All right, let's see. Okay, look, Alistair. We're we're buds. We're two guys out here. We're just chatting. So be honest with me, man. Come on, you, you can you can tell me. You can talk to me. So if you were raised in the Cherenches, does that mean that you have never... Wink, wink. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? Uh, ha, 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 ha. You know what I mean. I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? <laughs> Uh, somehow I feel like that's a reference to, to uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But uh, only because when I hear lampposts in the winter, that's what I think of Narnia and that uh, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, man. Such a classic. I'm talking about the old cartoon movie, not the uh, live-action one that came out recently. If you know which one I'm talking about, it's you, you, you'll know. If not, I, try and look it up. It's really good. Now you're making fun of me. Make fun of my comrade in arms? Perish the thought. Well, you tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? Don't say licked. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, if you recall, if you guys recall, back in the origin story, uh, there were those two noble hunters. <laughs> so I can say, yeah, why yes, I have the, uh, I have licked a lamp post in winter. <laughs> Whispering so that Liliana doesn't hear me. Just the once, and you didn't lose half of your tongue in the process. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I myself never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't <laughs> thought the about pleasure. it. pleasure. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hmm. You've never had the opportunity? Well, living in the Chantry is its not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. That's true. That's they, true. They raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? Not at all. I'm a gentleman myself. Hmm. Not really, no. I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come, after all. Mm -hmm. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alistair, did I embarrass you? Something on your mind? Of course. Alright, that's it. Okay, so now... Let us... Talk to Leliana. See what more she has I to say. I enjoy the nights at camp. The night always seems more peaceful to me. Safer. It does? Hmm. Hmm. I 
I know what you mean. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Silly, isn't it? The darks will never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. Hmm. Hmm. It's not silly to seek moments to lay down your burdens. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. <laughs> Sometimes, I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you still watchful. And I know you're watching out for me. Hmm. Hmm. You never have to feel afraid with me. What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are our, our leader and my friend. And sometimes I think that maybe we could be more than that. Oh, really? Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. You are so cute when you're embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. She is so adorable. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted us to be more than just friends. Keep in mind, I'm doing this very early on in the game, so I know it doesn't make that much sense for this to be happening right now. But this is what could eventually happen if you did it the hard way, rather than me doing it the easy way, which is just use the, the gifts to build it up. And, uh, yeah, so, but, yeah, this is what could eventually take place. I know it seems kind of out of place, that it's happening extremely early on in this game, but, uh, hey, you know, may, may as well, right? Really? N no one told me. You... You felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? You see that you hair from her eyes? Things. It makes her look so cute Why can't and you have said them first? <laughs> oh, you... Oh, how very awkward. <laughs> hmm. You still like me, right? Oh, chivalry is so dead. Making the lady spill her guts like that. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what well, was that you were I, saying? Um, that settles it then. I suppose it does. <laughs> Plus eight. <laughs> the stars are out. Hmm. Hmm. There is still beauty to be found in this world. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There hmm. is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? No. Tell me, tell me the story. A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindor was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her, and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was mm. furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone mm. in her tower, Elindra wept for her love and beseeched the guards to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. 
They say that when Alindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. Hmm. That's a beautiful story. This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? Hmm. Hmm. If we lose hope and love, then we are truly lost. I never expected you to say that. It is huh. a pleasant surprise. Really? <laughs> huh. I'm secretly a terrible romantic. I have to say there is a certain severity to you. Finding a person behind that all is nice. Hmm. Maybe you should let your softer side show more often. <laughs> Sometimes following your heart, not your head, leads you to remarkable places. Mm-hmm. Another plus three? I'm here for you. Oh, really? Hmm, we need to talk. Of course. What will you do when this is all over? Hmm, I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? A brief stop at the cloister in Lothering is in order. Hmm. I left quite abruptly, and I should tie up blue sands if I can. Hmm. You're not staying there for good? I'll not stay in Lothering for long. My time in the cloister was a time of healing, but I am ready to face the world again. Hmm. I would like to see the world too. There's so much out there. Adventures to be had and stories to be told. I want to be part of it all. I might need some company. And you're not too irritating. <laughs> you're welcome to come along if you like. Hmm. I would love to. It is settled then. You and I wandering the world, seeking our fortunes. I can't wait. Hmm. I'm here for you. Of course. About us. Wait, you want to talk uh, about us? Is there something bothering you? Hmm. You are the best thing that has ever happened to me. Really? You think so? You're so sweet. Aw, oh, no approval? Aw, oh, I really thought that would do it. Oh boy, here we go. I gotta be careful here. I think Morgan will come onto me just like uh, Leliana did. Ooh, here we go. I gotta... <laughs> stay, stay with Liliana. Stay with Liliana. Stay with Liliana. I await your command. Huh. Hmm. So... Full of questions, are you? <laughs> hmm. Tell me, are you really Flemeth's daughter? I assume you are actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly, I do not know. I once hmm. asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. Huh. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. Hmm. Could she have stolen you as a child? It seems likely, does it not? In an animal form, a babe could easily be spirited away and raised as Flemeth's own. Uh -huh. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> a cozy family of abominations apostate. Sounds lovely. <laughs> hmm. What if you have real family out there? I would have nothing in common with them, nor any need for what they might provide. Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. Hmm. I suppose that's true. You suppose it's true? Tis true. Hmm. To indulge in love is to indulge in delusion. Surely a Grey Warden such as yourself does not believe otherwise. <laughs> I do, in fact, believe otherwise. I see. 
Well, we all have our weaknesses, don't we? Uh-huh. You may call it a weakness, I call it a strength. I await your command. So, possibly, if I had the desire to, I do not. Huh. Oh my gosh. And why not? I was told to accompany you and to help you, and that I shall. This may extend to the teaching of my mother's skills in time. For now, I simply do not know you well enough. I promise nothing. Hmm. I await your command. So life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, twas to the trees. Oh, that must have been great conversation. <laughs> and did they speak back? Don't be foolish. <laughs> I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. Hmm. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I hmm. sped back to the wilds. Hmm, I can't imagine that Flemeth was pleased. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. Hmm. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. Aww. I was heartbroken. Hmm. But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Huh. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Hmm. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Hmm. Those are harsh lessons to teach a child. Perhaps, but they were necessary still. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Hmm. I await your command. We are in camp, so tis as good a t Okay, so I guess that's it for her. She didn't actually, uh... I guess that's later on when you actually uh, trigger... Uh, some of these discussions will not take place until certain things happen. Like we go to a certain place, or I give them a certain item, uh, or progress to the story. Then other conversations will open up, as well as... Uh, companion quests, although I already got Sten's companion quests very he, here very early on. Uh, let's let's talk to Bodan about any rumors that he's heard. Are you sure I can't I hear the Dwarven King is passed on. Oh, Old no. as he was, he was probably poisoned or assassinated. My, oh, That's how the dwarves normally gone. go out, isn't it? Oh, no. That's what I've heard on the road anyhow. Take it for what it is. Oh, now, if this was now, if, if if they could have worked this in, I I would have kind of loved for the option to be able to like your character to like, like all of a sudden be in dismay, like just heartbroken at hearing about this. This is the first time he's hearing that his father has passed away. You know, you know this my, Nixmas would be devastated by this. He loved his father, and now to hear that you know when he when he was exiled, he heard he was ill. Uh, that's what, um, uh, Haramont told him when he was exiled. And now he's hearing he's passed on. Ah. Uh. There's knights from Redcliffe spread all over Ferelden on some kind of mission. But I hear that they're starting to become rare to find. 
Maybe they all went back to Redcliffe. Quit putting your fingers through your wrists. Searching for something that can't be found and abandoned their search. I wonder what Earl Eamon is going to do without any knights. Oh, man. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. With King Caelan dead, the throne falls to Queen Anora. She's made her father the region, however, at least for now. I think Caelan's father, old King Merrick, would have approved. Hmm. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Something's going on at the Mage's Tower at Lake Callanhod. Nobody knows exactly what, though, and the Templars aren't saying. Hmm. Exactly what we need, isn't it? Let's hope the Mages are just cooking up something to deal with the Darkspawn. Somebody should be, after all. Hmm. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. I hear from folks traveling the East Roads that there's werewolves in the Brazilian forest. Werewolves? Actual werewolves. Whoa. They haven't been around since the days of Dane and his ilk. Wow. That's what I've heard in on the, the road, forest? anyhow. Take it for what it is. Isn't that where the elves are? Oh, boy. I hear that Tia Logain, the regent, is calling for new levies of troops. He wants to rebuild the army we lost at Astagar. Huh. Thing is, there's not a lot of spare men to be found. Out of Dragon's Peak, there's press gangs roaming around, grabbing any free man they can lay their hands on. Huh. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Unless he sold the young Orlesian woman that married Arl Eamon, I hear tell she tried to poison her husband so she could marry his brother, Bantegan. Whoa. Make us honest truth. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. So the rumor he's heard is that it was our last, that it was Isolde who uh, apparently got Eamon ill. Some hunters who range into the Brazilian forest say that a Dalish clan there has fallen to some kind of sickness. The blight, most likely, poor sods. Huh. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. I've heard a rumor that the reason Queen Enora has never produced an heir is that she's barren. Whoa. It's a curse from the maker for bringing a commoner into the <laughs> royal line. I doubt Until that. Until someone of royal blood is put on the throne, there will never be an heir. Huh. It seems the royal line of Kalinod has been broken for good, no? Hmm. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. There's a nasty rumor going around that the Grey Wardens are evil and that they worship the Archdemon. Wow. They're the ones that cause the blight. Well, they that's certainly an untrue rumor. That there was no use for them anymore, so they summoned up the Archdemon to do their bidding. It would explain a great many things. Oh, Dan, I'm right here. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. I heard a strange rumor the other day. King Caelan was not really Merrick's son, you see. Huh. Merrick's real son is hidden in the bowels of Denorum's palace and has been since he was born. Whoa, I suppose really? they'll feed him cakes all day to keep him <laughs> content. Maybe he's simple. Or a mage. Merrick's real son, a mage. Can you imagine? <laughs> I That's doubt what that I heard on the road, true. anyhow. There's talk that King Caelan was cheating on the Queen and Whoa. she found out about it. That's why Tyrn Loghain abandoned Caelan at Ostagar. Well, then that would make... That's what I've heard would, on the uh, road, anyhow. Explain for what it is. why he left them. That would definitely uh, make sense as to why he would abandon Caelan at Ostagar. Because uh, we all know how, how overprotective fathers can be if, of their daughters. And if he heard a rumor that Caelan was cheating on Anora, <laughs> oh man, then... What he did, Oscar, at least would make sense to me. It would be like, well, yep, of course. What, uh, what, uh, <laughs> what father wouldn't want to do that to uh, the guy who cheated on his daughter? I'm hearing many tales of corpses clawing out of their graves all over. Zombies. Not just people either, animals too. <laughs> just yesterday, a this farmer told everything. me about the kitten his daughter had buried behind his barn. Little thing came back to life and crawled up, mewling as loud as you please. Whoa. His daughter was delighted, at least until it just about chewed her finger off. <laughs> strange days, I tell you. Yeah, it's so strange you put That's your what fingers I've heard on the road, through your arms. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Nothing I can think of at the moment. Ah, oh. ran out of rumors to tell me. Okay, so we have done a lot of talking in the past few videos in, in camp here. So, sorry if it bored you, but I hoped it, it entertained you. And, you know, at least for those of you who like story and like uh, getting to know about the characters and companions that you're going to be traveling with and fighting with. 
for quite a bit of time uh, to know more about them and see how deep and interesting that they are. Uh, it's one of my favorite aspects of this. So now that we've pretty much talked to everyone that's here, the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, decide where to go next.